Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage, of RSA coverage 2023, day four. I'm your host, John Furrier. Dave Vellante left the building, he's flying back to Boston. And uh, we're going to wrap things up, last couple of interviews, going to get all the stories. We're going to go to the very end. Got a great story here with Dan Amigas, co-founder, CTO of Island. The enterprise browser is their product. It's a very compelling story. It thinks things differently, but provides an amazing, simple interface that we all know, the browser. Dan, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, thank you for inviting right, me. so we were just talking, we can't stop talking about this, now the cameras are on. Let's get into it. The Island, the company that you founded, you've done multiple startups, it's called the Enterprise Browser. What is it, why did you build it? Sure, so I founded the company with uh, uh, Mike Fay. Mike used to run Symantec and the CTO of McAfee in the past, and we got to know each other when he acquired uh, my uh, my company uh, in 2017. And uh, we thought about, um, we always thought about enterprise browsers as in, you know, the browser today is the main tool. It is the operating system. And uh, I like to ask uh, people if you have to choose mm -hmm. between your operating system with no browser or, or, or a browser, what, what, what would you go <laughs> for, right? And, and we just um, uh, figured out how the, the opportunity is huge. If you build a browser, looks and behaves exactly like Chrome or Edge, et cetera, but has all of the enterprise and IT and even productivity controls uh, and tools for the enterprise, right? And it turns out you can do it if you're basing it on Chromium, the open source project behind yep. all the modern browsers. Uh, we started two and a half years ago, um, you know, amazing traction, hundreds of customers, pretty much every vertical, financial, healthcare, uh, uh, industrial, retail. Uh, but also, since we're based in San Francisco, so one of the things that excites me most is mm. the tech adoption. So we have lots of big tech companies, yeah. no perimeter, only identity, con using the enterprise browser, over a million endpoints <laughs> today. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of the Brave browser when that came out, it's like, hey, that makes a lot of sense. That's everything built in for the consumer, you know, no malware, it's got some shielding for cookies, but it wasn't really an enterprise grade browser. You're saying you did a similar approach, built the browser from scratch using the open source Chromium, yeah, I remember uh, a few years ago, uh, you used to see Brave everywhere. It's a, yeah. it's a great product. Um, it's a living proof that there is room for purpose-built browsers. Yes. So Brave is a privacy-built browser, right? What we've done is we've built a browser that's built in for the enterprise, has a lot of privacy controls as well. Um, and what we've seen is, and we like to call it enterprise and not a secure browser. Um, yeah. It has a lot of security controls, well, like your anti mail They have different needs. Correct. The workflows behind it, a lot of Correct. legacy apps. So we do invest a lot in legacy and workflow, privacy, security. Um, uh, but yeah, purposely built browser for the enterprise is a, is a great thing. Well, uh, I think it's an interface. I mean, like, I'd love to have a cube browser for all of our, yeah. our users, media browser, but it's an interface. This is kind of a clever thing. So I can think of five reasons why I like it already. One, if you think about the workflows of old IT, I mean, this show here is, transforming from old security to new security. You're hearing about platforms. Platforms are inherently a great thing, but a browser is a front end to probably back end cloud. I'm sure I'll get more questions on how your back end works, but you know, as a user, I go to work. I'm a big financial services company. I'm sure they got some certified apps, Bloomberg subscription. They got databases. They got VDI or some sort of virtual desk. They want everything locked down. So and, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you about okay. what, what I consider okay. to be new security. <laughs> yeah, new go security. Ahead. Go ahead. New so let's, t let's go back 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you see a lot of the vendors today who've built tools for 10 years ago, and those tools are about shackling the user. They don't care about making the connection slower, the experience uh, bumpy, et cetera. They don't care about... So new security for me is about faster work, easier to work with, right? And that's what, that's what the enterprise browser is all about. When you build those tools directly, and I'll tell you what the aha moment, yeah. we've been talking about your nephew earlier, right? Yeah. And how he complains working at a financial and how things are slow, right? That's the aha moment. If, when, when you use the browser, things are faster. You can actually remove a lot of the intermediates and the speed bumps. And you talked about the cube browser for you guys. Yeah. So what we do is we also have what we call enterprise branding. So it's, it doesn't have to be the island browser. It can be the, this, the, the, 
the buzz of for the financial, the buzz of for the medical healthcare, uh, and it makes the experience so much better for the frontline workers. Let, let me ask you a question. I mean, the first thing the sketcher would say is, okay, what about compatibility? Some things don't work well with browsers. I even see Safari doesn't work well on some apps. Um, What's the what's the um, yeah, position the on compatibility? Yeah, the, the world is pretty much uh, standardized on Chromium as the de facto uh, platform. Mm -hmm. uh, so we you know we support anything that works in Chrome or Edge, etc. Uh, which is a hundred percent. Is Edge Chromium uh, based? Yeah, Edge okay, is Chromium based. I did based. not know that. Yeah. Edge is Chromium based since like three years ago, and. Um, um, so that pretty much covers 199% of the, of the enterprise. There's legacy as well. There's your old ActiveX, mm -hmm. Internet Explorer. We support that as well. So yeah, we ActiveX, baked that's, in. That's got some security issues. Yeah. You got to watch that. Yeah, yeah. so we, we baked it, exactly. So we baked in legacy I stuff, uh, IE stuff, and we do the controls for the ActiveX, the Flash, all of the all of the stuff that was. <laughs> it's a good it's a good example for consumer versus enterprise. The yeah. consumer browsers took these out. We kept them only for your internal apps, for specific applications where you can what put What are control. vulnerabilities? Are people would be like, okay, I, I get it, the browser. How do you ensure, give confidence that the security in the browser from an ActiveX or any kind of vulnerability that might be known or old? Or oh my God, the, 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 um, I like to call it the asymmetrical nature of the web. So think about a user goes to Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Salesforce has hundreds of security engineers, mm -hmm. right? But once you log in, the cookie is at the endpoint. But the security <laughs> is now at the endpoint responsibility, right? So what we did is, you know, we, we built an entire security stack that protects all of the user data, the cookies, local storage. We have an anti-exploitation technology mm -hmm. that takes all of these exploits away. We have anti-phishing technology, make sure users are not typing their credentials where they shouldn't have. We even have security awareness built into the product. So you can teach users what links they should click and what links they couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. How about browser on support for Mac? Oh, we, we work across. So biometrics all plays well into it as well. Biometric is a, biometric is a big portion of, of what we do. We take you know we like to uh, uh, say we have a lot of passwordless mm -hmm. abilities with biometrics. So it works ac uh, it works across all the operating systems, Mac and Windows, yeah. Linux, etc. Dan, take me through now. First of all, I love the product, I love the vision, I love the purpose-built browser. I think that's a very s clever and realistic vision. People want to have stuff customized. Back end, is there cloud behind it? What's behind it? How, what's the architecture or not? Is there toolbar market? Is there plugins? What's the extensibility? Take us through kind of the holi holistic architecture of the, your business. Sure, so very simple, very simple architecture. Uh, we have a policy that's being downloaded from the cloud. So you go and configure your policy in the management console, but then the browsers would download the policy and would run it locally. From your, on the from your cloud? Co correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, it's an endpoint application, it's a browser, the policy gets evaluated on, on the endpoint. Now, from an architectural perspective, it, it, the Chromium stack is very scalable, so you can build a lot of modules on top of mm -hmm. that stack. So my team is going up to be about 150 engineers, um, and, and think about them as a separate companies. Yeah. So we have comp we have a, a dedicated team working on DLP controls, a dedicated team working on productivity controls. From an e from a customer perspective, they get all of these modules built in when they when they download the browser and use it. Right? Uh, um, super extensible organizations can add more functionality, can keep using a hundred percent of the extensions they use today. Yep. Um, like the Chrome extension. Like the Chrome and extension. all the apps that are supported. No one knows the difference. It's really on OS. I, 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 Mac OS or Windows. You literally cannot tell the difference. Got it, so it's like Edge browser in a way. Yeah. It, it would feel like Chrome or Edge. Correct. But with all the controls that enterprise want. Yeah, and if you think about what we've been doing in the industry in the past uh, 15 yeah. or 20 years, we put all of those controls outside of the browser, mm -hmm. right? So now when you bake it inside, it makes so much sense. Also from an architectural yeah. perspective, we leave pre-SSL. You don't have to terminate SSL. Right, so the the end user experience is just so much faster, so much better. Talk about the uh, browser as it goes beyond the desktop to say mobile. You get web response, which I get that's probably going to be good. But is what about native mobile apps? Sure, and iPad apps or uh, over the top set top TV apps. 
So we have built-in so, so we have built-in support for mobile, and users can go ahead and, and download our mobile app for their enterprise and use it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big uh, a big uh, thing for us. Um, lots of a lot of a big requirement in the market. If you think about organizations, they need to enable BYOD. Right. They don't want to manage these devices. Nobody wants to manage thousands and thousands of devices. And in the workforce, nobody wants to have his device managed, right? So we do have a browser-based distribution where we can launch these iPhone apps, we can connect directly to internal applications or SaaS applications, apply controls, but those devices don't have to be fully managed devices. Ah, you're, the, just, you're the doorway to that enterprise. Correct. So you're looking at an enterprise app there. Correct. As far as the phone's concerned. As far as the phone concerned. Okay, so let's get into the customers. What's the traction that you have right now? Take us through some of the business side of it. Um, yep. What's it like? Obviously, uh, what's your reaction here on the floor? I saw the big booth, you got a huge booth, congratulations. Thank you must you. be swimming in some VC money, right? Uh, <laughs> Customer money? It's right, uh, well, uh, you're doing well? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no, uh, no complaint there. The company has, has raised more than uh, 250 million, uh, million dollars. Uh, you know, it's our uh, sixth or seventh uh, rodeo, so uh, we were lucky to partner with uh, some of the best investors in the world, Sequoia and Insight uh, and the likes. It, uh, uh, it's a huge opportunity now in terms of tr in terms of traction. This is a new category. Yeah, totally. So customers agree. on heavy custom built browser front end tied into a back end cloud. Totally get it. Is it, is it yeah. So so new category means there's no budget yet, right? <laughs> new category means customers are skeptical, right? Yeah. And but you got to educate them. Exactly. But guess what happens when they see it? They're like, this changes so much, so much stuff. It's so much stuff. It's such a big opportunity for consolidation. Mm -hmm. So we've been about a, a year and a quarter, so about five quarters uh, in the market. Uh, uh, selling and delivering. Selling and delivering. Mm -hmm. You know, Fortune f uh, 10 customers, Fortune 100 customers, across every vertical. So there are lots of adoption, uh, hundreds of customers. Um, uh, customers I'm very excited about, some of the big names in the world, but also yeah. since we're based in, in San Francisco, some of the best tech companies in the world are adopting and this. And they're rolling it out across the company, so it's not like, are they rolling out like because as a field, or are they taking pilot approach? So, uh, 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 you know, they, they're, they're adopting it, so you don't have to do an enterprise-wide enrollment on day one. So we have uh, uh, customers who've started with their BYOD or mm -hmm. contract or use case, um, and, and then what we're seeing is we're seeing these great movement with they start with one use case mm -hmm. and like any platform right they oh it's so easy let's apply this yeah, to more yeah. controls right by the way they don't have to change the you don't have yeah. they don't have to tell their users you guys should stop using chrome or stop yeah. using edge right there's a dual modality yeah, yeah they can have it. i mean look it's a bold first of all congratulate bold move love love the strategy love the aggressiveness category creation is a big Move. Always fun. <laughs> Always fun, Let's go big or go home right yeah. there. And it sounds like you get looking good off the tee, as they say in, in the VC world. Now, the question I would say is that, okay, if DevOps replaces, DevSecOps replaces IT, normally this kind of old way was run by IT departments. Now, network and security teams are taking over that function and DevOps has taken over IT. Because mm -hmm. developers are doing all the IT. Yeah. But classic IT of getting someone their machine, getting all their apps, putting the servers together, that's all done in the cloud now. It's a little bit easier, I should say, but, well, some would argue with that, but like, it's just different. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not a department, people just manual labor, now it's gone away, you're now the platform. Who's running this right now for you? Is it the DevOps teams? Is it the security teams? Is it the network teams? So it really depends on the on the company. We have customers where you know they spend about an hour a week, right, to set it up, yeah. and it would be that one security guy. Usually, companies about up to five thousand uh, uh, employees, and then we have. Uh, uh, big um, digitalization projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been working with uh, uh, a big business and uh, it's going to change the way they access their apps. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of users, right? Then they have a bigger team, right? Yeah. Usually um, um, the IT team or the desktop team would be, would be running this, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the next goal for you? What's the next step? Get the funding, you're in market, you're going to amp it up, raise the awareness. Get some beachhead. What's the use case that gets you in the door, locks you in? Well, it's, it's actually not a security uh, use case. I'd say one of our main use cases is the, is the VDI reduction. Yeah. Uh, we call it the length of the wire. It's 2023. Nobody wants to wait to get pixel streams from the cloud to go to Salesforce, right? So we see a lot of VDI reduction. Also, from a just pure dollars perspective, a VDI session would be thousands of dollars a year for, yeah. a, for an average company. We take it 
down quite a bit, right? Um, so that's the main use case. Uh, what's what's uh, in it uh, for us going forward? Uh, we're going to keep pushing. The opportunity yeah. is, is, is huge. You got a lot of engineers, 150 engineers. That's a good number. Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going yeah. that up. The, again, the opportunity is a big opportunity. Um, and you said you got SF and then you got Tel Aviv. Is that where the operations we got are? The, uh, headquartered in, he, we're headquartered in Texas. Texas, okay. Uh, that's where uh, Mike Fay, uh, our CEO, is okay. and my, uh, my, uh, my business partner. And then we have engineering and product based in Tel Aviv. Awesome. Well, we're going to get the Cube to Tel Aviv this year. Oh, we were gonna happy have to in, host you guys. Yeah, we were going to be there in 2019, but the pandemic hit, we were making plans. There's so much demand for the Cube in Tel Aviv. Uh, we're going to need you to give us a little endorsement when we get down there, but yeah, great stuff. Congratulations on the Island Browser, Island Enterprise Browser with Island. Purpose built, very bold, very visionary, very real. I think it's going to be the next big thing. The question is going to be: You got to get those engineers, make sure all the binaries are there. Got to execute. Making sure that you can, the developers can write code to it, create an ecosystem for it. Then yeah. I think you're golden. Absolutely. We got to we got to execute. As I always like to say, 2023, <laughs> the product has to be perfect. Yeah. Customers have to love it. But thank you for having me. Congratulations. Great conversation, Dan Amigos, the CTO, co-founder of Island. They make the enterprise browser a, a revolutionary idea, new category creation, which is we know what that means. Uh, it's going to go big or go home, and we know, looking good right now. So, Dan, thanks for coming on. This is theCUBE coverage. We're already going big here, day four, live coverage. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back with more. Wrapping up the show after this short break. <laughs>